Amen. We love God's word this morning. And this morning, I've been waiting to just oh, continue to speak to God, continue to speak to God's people. Last week, I told you, even when I was preparing for last week's uh, message, I was already getting downloads from uh, the Holy Spirit for this week's message. And so I want to encourage us this, uh, this afternoon, if it was just a, a continuation, it would be that whole one word series I was talking about, one word. But uh, today I want to just share that one word, and that one word is believe. Believe. If I would give a subject, it would be believe, only believe. Believe, only believe. In Mark chapter 5, verse 35 through 36, Mark chapter 5, verse 35 through 36, and I might uh, go on and give a little more, uh, maybe uh, even continue on to 37 and beyond that just to complete the, the story. Uh, verse 35 says of Mark chapter 5, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher, Jesus, we're talking about anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe. He told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Verse 37, just to, to complete the story, he did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of John. Jesus saw uh, the, common, uh, the uh, commotion, he saw the commotion with people crying and waiting and wailing aloud. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him, they laughed at Jesus. After he put them all out, sometimes you gotta put people out that don't wanna believe, that can't stand with you in faith. He put them all out and he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by her hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Wow. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. The King James Version, I believe, because I was reading from the NIV says, only believe, only believe. I love this whole Mark chapter five and really uh, so many people refer to Mark, uh, so many verses in Mark where it is a building up of our faith. It is an encouraging us in faith to just believe the power of believing. And many times, as I say so often, faith and belief are synonymous. But even many people say that faith uh, is that next step from belief or belief uh, begins faith. Faith is the next step, but belief is the thing that sparks our faith. I am so, so encouraged by the word believe. Even in this season, if you pay attention, you'll see commercials uh, that are Christmas commercials now, but you'll see 
oftentimes the word believe just show up in the middle of those commercials. The word believe. Because in this season, it is so important to understand the power of belief. This is why we are where we are even now, because it is our belief that got us here. It is our belief in God that has got us here. So I want to encourage us today in the power of belief. Even if you look and you take the time, I, I challenge you to take the time to read uh, the whole fifth chapter of Mark. Because uh, if I were to think about it, I would think about it, it looks like it's a whole day in the life of Jesus Christ. Just that fifth chapter is like a day in the life of Jesus Christ. But I titled it in, in my notes, A Day of Faith. It looks like a whole day of faith. Why? Because when he starts off in chapter five, the first part of chapter five, you see that Jesus restores a demon-possessed man. He restores the man who's possessed with demons, living, the Bible says, amongst the tombs. And even when they try to put him in chains, the man is so demon-possessed that he breaks out of those chains. And then Jesus comes in contact with, contact with this man, and the, the man begins to, the demons speak out of the man, basically saying, please don't torment me. Leave me alone. Don't torment me. What, what, ha, what would you have with us? And Jesus, basically, uh, in scripture, what we see the miracle is he, he speaks to those demons, which uh, the man, when Jesus asked the man, what's your name? And, and the, the demons say, we are legion, meaning many. And Jesus commands the demons, but the, the, the demons have one request. The demons say, don't just, don't just send us anywhere. Uh, send us somewhere where, where, where it would be uh, feasible for us to just, uh, uh, just continue doing what we're doing. But Jesus didn't allow it, but he did see. He saw uh, uh, pigs being shepherded, uh, pigs at this point, not lambs, but pigs. And Jesus speaks to the demons and the demons are cast into the pigs, which then run off the cliff and are drowned. And so even in this, you see such a powerful uh, understanding of Jesus' ministry and miracle working power. And, and I'm not telling you this because I'm trying to, it, it's not the demon part I want you to get. It is the power part. It is the belief. It is the power to know that in the name of Jesus, we have the power to speak to situations. Thankfully, I haven't had, had a lot going on with, with dealing with demons and casting out demons and all of that. To God be the glory, because I, I grew up in churches where, uh, where that happened and all of that. But, but to God be the glory, I guess uh, uh, we have come into the understanding now that we can uh, take authority over that. And those spirits are under our feet. Jesus has given us Thankfully, we understand the end of the story and how it moves to the point of the cross. What Jesus says now and his resurrection, after his resurrection, that all power has been given unto me. So those, those things don't have authority and don't have power because Jesus, the understanding is, has all power. And when Jesus says that all power has been given unto me, all means all which is why sometimes I get in, uh, get in trouble with the, with the demon believers that want to give demons more power. No, because I believe that God has all power. I believe that God is all powerful. And, it, and since God is all powerful, there is no other power. Thank God. Thank God I could shout on that. Because there, because God, as, as, as who is that, uh, Hezekiah Walker said, because God is not just, I say, not just the greatest power. He says the greatest power. I said, because God is all powerful, we will not be defeated. So then as Jesus leaves this uh, area from the tombs and this demoniac is, is healed and the demons are cast out and then he, the people see him sitting normally with his clothes and dressed and in his right mind, the people are amazed and astonished. And as he goes on, he runs into Jairus. 
Jarius is the one who next Jesus runs into as he is making his trek uh, uh, away from this area, going to the next. And Jarius says, my daughter is sick. And, and I believe that you can heal her. My daughter is sick and I believe that you can heal her. He asked Jesus to come to his house to pray and to minister to his daughter. Jesus agrees. But this is not the end of that story because on the way to Jerry's house, the Bible says that crowds are thronging him, the, 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 the throngs of the crowds, they're just pushing on him. And all of a sudden, somebody touches him. And Jesus says, who touched me? And the disciples said, who touched you? Everybody's touching you. Why are you asking who touched you? Because Jesus feels the virtue go out from him. He looks around and then realizes, and here's the next part. He realizes that he has been touched by the woman with the issue of blood. 12 long years, she has battled this disease of this blood issue for 12 years and she touches Jesus. She then is healed and made whole. But this is what I love about that whole part in this story. He tells her that woman, your faith, your belief have made you whole. Do you not get it by now that we have the power to believe so that we can allow ourselves to be made whole? That same power is resident within us. We are the people, the children. We are believers. We have given our lives, our souls, our, our minds to this, our will to God. Do you not know God has, has allowed through Jesus Christ himself to be manifest within us? That's why I believe, as the scripture said, it is God in you, the hope of glory. It is Christ in you the hope of glory. Christ in us, meaning we have the connection, the God connection within us. So we're not looking for God somewhere outside of ourselves, only that we know that God is not just within us, God is everywhere. My favorite quote about that is, there is no spot where God is not. So this woman touches Jesus. She literally says within herself, I believe if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Her own belief system changed her life. When she did what she believed to do, she got the victory she believed to have. And so as he is going to Jairus' house, the woman with the issue gets healed. And then he arrives at Jairus' house where now it's taken so long until now the, in the natural and all of those who are at the house say the girl has died. It's too late. The girl has died. And that's where we come to our text where while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, saying, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? In other words, they're saying, your daughter is dead. Leave Jesus alone. And Jesus overhearing what they said, Jesus told Jairus, don't be afraid. See, this is where fear kicks in. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. This is so critical right now in this season when every time you turn on the TV, you are seeing, and this is why I'm so sensitive to where we are in this time. We're seeing the, 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 the effect effects of COVID and, and the many people who are dying. And it is literally a challenge of faith to be able to speak to a people to say, just as those bystanders did, she's dead already. Uh, don't trouble uh, uh, the teacher anymore. The enemy of our minds wants to say, all these people that have died, don't, uh, uh, don't believe, don't just, just give up now. It's, it, it, it's over, you know, uh, we're going to just have to deal with this. No, I'm here to tell you, like Jesus said, don't be afraid. Just believe. Don't be afraid. Just believe. I know we're seeing the thousands 
of death, toll, the tolls going up. I know we're seeing uh, the millions around the world and the uh, oh, past oh, over the 250,000 uh, mark in America of people we have lost. Some, many, sometimes those are people we know and family and friends. And I'm here to tell you, even in the face of all of these hundreds of thousands of deaths, not my words, but God's word. Don't be afraid, only believe. Don't be afraid, only believe. This is a tough time, but don't be afraid, only believe. I'm here to tell you, yes, 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 yes. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Whatever your situation is, it may not be COVID, it may not be all of these situations that other people are going through. It may not be the situations that I've lifted up in Mark chapter five, but everybody has something. And I wanna challenge you today. Don't be afraid, only believe. I'm speaking to all of you that are on this Zoom and I'm speaking to all of you that are gonna see this on YouTube and around the world. Don't be afraid, only believe. I'm going to tell you, even in the face of death, Jesus had to remind Jairus, don't be afraid, only believe. Why? Because the life giver was with him. The, the miracle worker was with him. And now here's the power. You saying, well, Jesus has gone back to the Father. Well, the truth is that Jesus is resident within you. And we are in Christ. The Bible says, if any man or woman be in Christ, they are new creatures. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. The word says, I am crucified. You know my favorite scriptures with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith or the belief of the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Therefore, I do not frustrate the grace race with unbelief, with, with getting in flesh. Why? Because Christ is with me. I know that I'm in him and he is in me. That means I'm connected. I'm one with the father. Jesus says that I am the father of one. And if Jesus and you are one, Jesus and I are one, then we are one with the father. We have the power within us. We are not distant. We are not looking for it. It is here. The power is with us. Only believe. I want to tell you that in this last 40 some seconds before I pray and bless you today, that the belief that you have is a choice. You have to choose to believe. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I choose to believe. I choose to believe that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all I can ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. We've got to just step into the belief. We've got to baptize ourselves into the belief. Why? Because he is able to do exceeding and abundantly. All we got to do is only believe, Jesus tells us, only believe. Father, I thank you this morning that you sent your word and it healed us and delivered us. I thank you for these individuals that have gathered, Father, this morning on this conference call and on this Zoom, Father, and that are seeing this uh, message even as it is streamed uh, on YouTube. Father, I thank you that you are building faith, that belief is rising up. Father, that expectation and belief is on the inside of us. And Father, I speak to our faith. I speak to our belief. I speak to our strength. Father, I speak to our encouragement. Father, I speak to those, even those prayers that have been prayed this morning already by our elder. Father, I thank you that you are answering those prayers and they are answered now because we believe you. Father, I give you praise and I give you glory this morning 
For no weapon formed against us prospers and every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we condemn for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and our righteousness is of him. So this morning I decree and declare that now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God give you his peace in your going out, in your coming in, in your lying down and in your uprising, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until we come to stand before Jesus in that day where there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen and amen. Only believe.